What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Ambition on Fleek. I am your host, Peng Peng Lee. And I am your co-host, Janae Honest. And through this podcast, we want to inspire and motivate you through our unique stories from our gymnastics experiences. We are both NCAA national champions and know what it takes to be successful in athletics. <laughs> and through the sport of gymnastics, we learn the importance of balance when it comes to addressing the physical, mental, and emotional sides of life. But before we get into the topic, let's start with our Perfect 10 segment. Yeah, okay, Jay, what was your Perfect 10 (laughs) moment? Perfect 10 moments are basically anything in the week or anything in the day that you're proud of that you feel confident and that you also feel um, that you've taken ownership and are moving forward. So mine's really small, but I've been really proud last week or just in the past couple of days, but I've been getting back into researching and starting back on my uh, all natural regiment of paying more attention to ingredients. So, cause you remember how I would always pay attention to ingredients in like makeup products and yeah. soaps and all that stuff. But I've been paying more attention to just with what I've been fueling my body. I don't know why, I think I just was, um, I think I needed that break of freedom after gymnastics to kind of just eat whatever I want but now my skin's getting bad (laughs) like um, I'm just trying to get in better um just my health in order but I do want to want to I did want to get back into all natural ingredients um in the products that I use because I am getting older so I gotta pay more attention to that now (laughs) (laughs) no wrinkles yet though Mm, I don't know (laughs) we'll see so my perfect 10 segment would be um So we have our launch party coming up, and there's been a lot of planning around that. And we met with the guy who's hosting us and everything and wrote things out. But the thing I'm most proud of is that I haven't actually added it to our Google thing, so you can't see it. But I've started typing out the dialogue that I wanted to say for our Q&A. Oh, Um, wow, Jay, thinking ahead. Yeah, so because you told me, oh, we're going to start with introducing it and what we've already talked about and stuff. So I kind of just started outlining that, but on my work computer, so I'll add it to the wow. <laughs> Google Doc. But, yeah, so kind of just planning ahead because it is coming up quick. It's, what, next week? Yeah, it's next week. So, well, I mean, not for this podcast because it's a week from today of when we're recording this podcast or this episode, I should say. So um, I wanted to just kind of jump start on that and not have any last-minute things happening because I don't just want I don't want to be stressed during it I want to actually have fun and not have to worry about oh my gosh I didn't get streamers (laughs) (laughs) I love being partners with (laughs) Janae she's always prepared and always thinking ahead of the game it inspires me oh my goodness we met with the host and um I brought my iPad because I wanted to take notes and I didn't bring an actual notepad because I kind of wanted to hurry out of work really quick and she said oh I know Janae would have been like she would have shown up prepared so i thought it would be fine if well because I, I brought, brought my myself. okay i brought my laptop <laughs> because i was prepared and was about to take notes and m- create a google doc because we have one no we don't sorry but we we have we're in communication all online yeah but i left my laptop in the car and realized that as i was sitting down and then i knew you were coming <laughs> <laughs> so i knew you would bring a notepad because <laughs> that is just a janae thing to do you know, so we just make the perfect pair. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I was coming up with all these wild ideas oh my God. that people weren't thinking about yet. So it was it was great. Oh <laughs> my mind yeah. was all over the place. You're the creative mind. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait. Um, but we'll probably live stream it, or I'll, I'll be posting a vlog about it. Yeah, because I want to that'd share cool it with to, everybody. That'd be cool to live stream. We can. We'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and what? Insta live. Yo, yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about in this podcast? Today's topic is, I'm sure you guys will be excited about this one. How do I calm my nerves down during a meet? Ooh. So the reason why we wanted to talk about this topic is we knew it would be relevant as far as um, competition because we know regionals um, just ended and nationals is coming up and there's kind of this big gap. It's at least four to five weeks between those two. So with nationals coming up and JOs, we thought, oh, how do we calm our nerves during a meet? Because it is the last meet of the season. Mm. It's not really any more qualifiers, you know what I mean? But, you know, you got college coaches looking at you and all this different thing. So there are more aspects that can get your nerves up, so to speak. 
For sure. And so NCAA National Championships just happened as well. And so UCLA didn't have their best meet, but I think it was really important to learn from that because they're going to learn how to keep their nerves how to calm their nerves down, Mm -hmm. but also they had a lot of pressure on them this year. So I completely understand that it's really hard to compete with all that pressure, the pressure of their head coach leaving, Miss Val, the pressure of winning national championships last year and everyone um, telling them to repeat, Mm -hmm. the pressure of Caitlin going viral. There's just so many things that that team had to deal with that a lot of other teams didn't have to deal with, and it definitely – it – it kind of showed that they were they were nervous or not nervous but they they weren't um, going a hundred percent or being a hundred percent themselves. Yeah, I think um, it was just really evident that they were trying to be too perfect or um, you know just doing not just doing their normal. That's just kind of what you feel. Or when a mistake would happen, it didn't really feel or just looking at it that they really couldn't really get back on track but I do think that they were really good with um keeping the theme of leaving with no regrets Mm -hmm. and um they did want to make it special and make it a good last meet for Miss Val rather than leaving just very upset which you know it's hard when you're defending a national championship and you don't win you're gonna be upset you're gonna be just kind of dwelling in the fact that oh why did these mistakes happen what could I have done different why didn't it go different you know what I mean but like you said, there's all those different aspects of Ms. Val and defending it and all that stuff that kind of played into it. So it's always a learning experience, and there's a lot of changes that are going to be happening with this team because Ms. Val is leaving. So um, that stressful impact on them has yet to actually die down because there's more things happening. For sure. Yeah. All right, well, let's get into how you deal with nerves during competition because I was actually thinking about it when I was thinking about this topic I deal dealt with the nerves differently when I was younger than I when when I was older no same yeah I think when I was younger I was still trying to figure it out so I was doing a bunch of things that other people were doing Mm. um I knew a lot of they would say try deep breathing I think there's um there's a exercise that you can do when you hold your breath for five seconds and release for 10 or something I did that too you did that Mm -hmm. what do you know what it's called no, I didn't know there was a name. <laughs> oh, no, it, it's like, um, I don't a know technique. the number. It's like 810 or something or 710. You kind of breathe in for seven seconds and release for 10 seconds. Oh, okay, so yeah. it, I've it, done it, a version of that before. I've tried that. It, it definitely slows your heart rate down. Um, I, I think I do always do a version of a deep breath before I compete. But when I was younger, I didn't, I, I was doing it, but I didn't actually, um, believe in it I guess Mm, if you will so I was just doing it just because yeah um everyone else was doing it I didn't actually think about or just know or was educated about how it does slow my heart rate down and why you should even do it or yeah I just thought people do it to take a deep breath before it wasn't like oh this will slow your heart rate down this will get your blood levels back Mm. to normal kind of thing you know what I mean no high blood pressure (laughs) no high blood pressure (laughs) um I think for me what was different for me is that I became more I started overthinking way more in college than I did in club and I think that's why Mm. my mindset was different because I didn't really think much in club at all um honestly Mm. beam was the event that always made me nervous and um just thinking back I vividly remember this one beam routine it was at state so I had to qualify to regionals and if I fell I wouldn't have qualified so of course I had that in my mind but and it was the shakiest beam routine I think I've ever had in my life and I vividly just remember me like to my core shaking on this beam and I kind of tripped a little bit but you know (laughs) I was going through my my skills and I think subconsciously I was taking my skills one at a time but I wasn't thinking okay think this skill what do I need to do here I was just kind of thinking like okay did that skill now it's the full turn okay made that you know what I mean but I mean I feel that my mindset was just a lot more simpler naturally because I wasn't thinking that much I became a little more mental in college than I was in club I feel like in college too you're striving for perfection so every single wobble every single skill has to be perfect so I think that might be why um some people can get more mental in college yeah because you're always thinking about every single little detail of everything you've been practicing but in in club I kind of just went for it you just went for it huh (laughs) like I thought it's really hard to explain but I really just 
did my stuff. I really didn't think – I never really got nervous. Maybe if I did have a new skill that I was competing and that I only had trained that week because it was so new. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I kind of just – yeah, I took a deep breath and went hard rather than, oh, my gosh, I'm just. <laughs> yeah. so in, I got so nervous in club. Like, I, I would get more nervous in club because I think there was only one competition every so often. Yeah. And also because I'm really competitive, so I wanted to do really well. Yeah. And I think naturally I just had this so much anxiety <laughs> like oh, yeah. to get on the equipment. But um, I, I found out that calming my nerves never really happens a hundred percent like i am never a hundred percent calm if that makes yeah. sense in college it got better because i think since we competed every single weekend mm -hmm. it was um it was i i just got used to competing so i, I just didn't get as nervous right. except at national championships but in every other competition like regionals pac 12s even um at home meets i think because it was so much more fun to play to the crowd mm -hmm. it wasn't as i didn't get as nervous because i yeah. was doing it for the crowd but in elite yeah you know <laughs> gymnastics in canada is not really that big so you're kind of still doing it for yourself yeah in a sense yeah and you're um it's harder to play up to a crowd especially when you're international sometimes right um because you're not it's not like you have your brewin section and you're playing <laughs> to them it's it's kind of oh my parents I, where are you <laughs> people <laughs> two people <laughs> With the Canadian flag. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, mine was definitely flipped. I was more nervous in college because I felt that I had to prove more than I did in club. Mm. But, yeah, I really just preparing for this episode, I really had to think about what was my mindset going in because I was thinking, oh, what if I was competing a new skill or my Takach of my major release in club was never consistent. It became <laughs> consistent when I got to college, guys. I swear I would make probably – two out of five or six in practice in club like that's how really that's how often I would or not often I would catch my Takachi <laughs> so um and we would try and change the technique and then we would get to summer and we tried something different and we were just trying to get it consistent and I don't know what it was but I, it did not get consistent until I got to college because then I would catch it would be rare if I didn't catch it or I would yeah. just be far you know what I mean but it was <laughs> just totally different but then when I would go up and compete I just would be like okay here we go well, Try that's and pretty catch impressive. It. Um, Try and catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and when it didn't happen, I wasn't like, well, damn, like, I, what, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? It was just kind of like, okay, let me just finish my routine. <laughs> like, so wow, it was just such a good mindset to have. Yeah, and it's, I guess it's easier said than done, but that was just what my mindset was. But I do understand what you guys may be feeling because I felt that in college. Like, I became right. more... Um, I'll say I'll say mindful, but I became just more aware, aware and more mental in college. And just I started overthinking way too much in college. And I guess mm. it was just hard to try and bring it back to how it was in club. But I wanted to be better and I didn't have to kind of I think in club I was kind of just staying at this level playing field and just I was kind of improving, but I didn't really have to upgrade anything because once I got to the point where I had all my skills, it was just like, OK, improve. But I mean, I wasn't right. really thinking, I guess because I wasn't in cl in college and I wasn't competing like with you, not competing, but like I wasn't on a team with you and Sam and like mm -hmm. I wasn't with Olympian. So I didn't feel like I had to, I just had to be. You right, know? right. No, so I, I get it. I'm just trying, as I'm talking, I'm trying to think of like why I wasn't overthinking stuff and why I started in college because that was like a major switch. Like vault, loved vault. It was one of my best events in club. And then once I got to college, I just did not like it. And I, would, <laughs> I would just see Janae running to the vault and then she just peace out. Yeah, I like, would balk a lot. She would Oh, she, would, she would just have a mental block and run to the vault, and then as soon as she gets to the board, just run off. Yeah. <laughs> and this would happen on the daily. I, mean, I would be like, oh, there goes Janae. Yeah. <laughs> so um, don't worry, guys. I completely understand what it feels to be mental because I am one of those athletes. Because my roommate, Melissa Metcalf, she just doesn't understand it because she said, just just do the skill. And I'm like, no, I don't think you understand. Like, <laughs> It's a lot that goes into it. Um, I think when I was younger... Honestly, I think I was overcoaching myself, kind of like what you were doing in college. Yeah. It was because I was at the elite level and I was competing against other international gymnasts, I thought I had to be so serious. Right. Because when you watch other 
Olympians, they all have straight faces. They're all look. They all look dialed in. So I was like, okay, I gotta look dialed in, no smiling kind of thing. Right. Now and then I would kind of just tell myself, I got it, I got it. Like you can do it, you can do it. Like hyping myself up. Right. But that didn't work for me actually. <laughs> At that, that's how I try to calm my nerves down. I try to calm my nerves down with music when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I would listen to a lot of Ed Sheeran, like really calming music, or really. Um, uh, like happy go lucky songs like Justin Timberlake, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like can't stop the feeling, like that kind of vibe. Yeah. So that was what I would do when I was younger, but I actually it didn't help me because then I felt super isolated. I felt way too isolated and way too in my thoughts mm. that it, I, I was just almost consuming myself. And like I don't even do that during practice. During practice, I'm talking to everybody. So actually, when I started getting older. I started talking to people. I like yeah. started talking to my, my teammates. I started talking to my coaches. And I would get in trouble all the time for talking during competition. But it really helped me calm my nerves down yeah. because I was getting it out to other people. Mm-hmm. And then my coach, whenever he saw me get really tense, he actually would tell me a joke. <laughs> Like yeah. he, he would crack a joke before, right before I competed because he knew that I compete, competed better when I was easier and loose, but I didn't know that at the time. I think I just wasn't really analyzing myself. I just wanted to be like those other elite gymnasts yeah. who were really serious. Yeah. So I actually got so nervous because I think I still hadn't figured out how to compete and calm my nerves down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes you just don't know how to get there. Yeah. It's hard. It is hard. I, I, we understand. It, it's not like we say, oh, we found something and it works. Sometimes it's it really changes on the day. Mm-hmm. I um, actually had a similar experience with you in club. So as I mentioned before, because I I didn't really think of things so seriously in club, it that doesn't mean I never got nervous because Beam always got me nervous. <laughs> um, so what I remember growing up in – what we would do before we would compete. Cause you know, cause you said you would listen to music and you felt you started Mm -hmm. isolating yourself. So what I would do is that I would always get around my teammates and joke around with my coaches and we'd listen to music and play different games because club meets are really long. They're like four hours. So you're there for, they're they're long, (laughs) like really long. So you're waiting for longer and you're just there for a more significant amount of time. So I made it a point not to isolate myself and cuz ob- and listening to music always just got me out of my head regardless of, you know, my favorite song of that time or whatever, probably Chris Brown. Um <laughs> and plug in. Yeah. <laughs> um but I think it's good to kind of get into your zone maybe a few a few or a couple minutes before you're a teen, but you don't have to dwell in that for the whole 20 minutes of like before you compete because you are and I'm thinking specifically to beam because that's the event that made me the most nervous but beam and floor that's when you're waiting I mean you're waiting forever in yeah. all four events in club so um that's so I I wanted to get to a point of evening competitions and morning competitions but like what you said how you're just waiting we should talk about um do nerves change for you if you are first in lineup or last in lineup? Does oh, it depend? It's like completely different for right? me. If I'm last, and because that's more time for you to get in your own head, which is and why. And to watch everybody. Yeah, so which is why I would play games with my teammates and joke around with my coaches and just kind of do stuff to keep my mind occupied. Yeah, my coach would crack jokes to me too because it's like when you're just sitting there waiting for yourself to go, that's like 15 minutes at least. Mm-hmm. Because you would really wait that long. Um, so that is what I did, I remember specifically, in club to kind of just um, stay out of my head. And then when I'm up next, you know, I have one more routine and then I can go. Then I would go off to the side, you know, review my cues or whatever and get the last few um I was going to say talks. I was gonna, the last, yeah. <laughs> the, um, I would get the last few just pointers from my coach, and then I would just go. But then I would kind of dedicate the last few minutes to that rather than, you know, spending a bunch of time trying to think about how to make this routine perfect. So that's what I did. But I definitely was a switch into when I got to college. When I got to college, there was just kind of praying and meditating and deep breathing was something that really resonated with me because it helped me – Oh, this is happening again. Okay, so I can't remember which specific episode this happened last time, but there's an elevator that's 
not getting to the top floor. It's struggling. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I can't go today. Yeah, so if you hear it, we hear it too, and it'll probably stop. I don't know. It, took, it was like 20 minutes It'll probably minutes stop about time. the time we have we, to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I don't know. It sounds like a crane it, or something. It sounds like a furnace that's about to explode. <laughs> okay. So we're all going to die is what you're saying. We love you. <laughs> no kidding. I'm kidding. Just kidding. don't know. Straight kidding. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I guess the, I'll just say it over. The switch that I made from club to college because I started overthinking more and I was getting a little more mental um, in college was that I would use, uh, I would pray, use meditation and deep breathing because deep breathing always, you know, slows your heart rate down. But I think I used this because it helped me focus inward instead of the distractions of the world that can heighten your stress more. So I wouldn't focus on the crowd. I wouldn't focus on you know, oh, this is regional, so we have to do super, you know what I mean? So mm. that was in the back of my mind, but I would kind of just focus on why I was competing and why I love the sport and focusing on, you know, what my love is for the sport and focusing on that rather than, oh, my gosh, you know. Yeah, mm. I, I think the other thing in college, um, what really helped me is learning how to turn my nervous energy into um, excited energy. Wow. I know, I saw your point, Jay, <laughs> and I, I actually had the exact same thing, too. Oh, my gosh, we're just we're the same sync. person. <laughs> but, um, no, because it's really hard to, look at this, see, learning how to transfer nerves into excited energy. Yeah, and I would use dancing to do that, so if y'all ever saw me or paying, I mean. Oh, both of us were going We ham. were always dancing in any free time that we had because that was me turning nervous energy into excited energy or even if it was nervous energy that I didn't really uh, that I wasn't aware of but just to always be excited so I was always happy so I that's yeah. why I always was dancing all the time and then I would also still listen to music and mm. I would listen to this specific YouTube video so y'all could look it up because I started listening to this YouTube <laughs> video in like my se my junior or senior year of club um, it's called Elite Gymnastics, Why Do We Fall? And it is a, you don't have to watch the video, but the um, audio montage is of all the motivational sports movies of any just great quote that you have probably heard in movies like compiled together. And it was just, it's I um, would listen to it before every competition my freshman and sophomore year. That's cool. See, if I listened to that, I think I would get too much in my head mm, yeah. about being, okay, like, I got it. Like, I'm, I'm the best. You know what I mean? Right, right, for right. Me, for me, my dealing with my nerves, I, I didn't use words. It was more of a feeling. Um, what, so I, that's why the dancing was so important. That's why learning how to deal with um, transferring my nervous energy into excited energy was so crucial to me mm -hmm. because – I could, if I heard words and someone was hyping me up that much, it almost gets to my head oh, I see. where they're just hyping me up way too much. I see. That's yeah. why when um, when you see UCLA gymnastics, we kind of fist bump each other, and every girl says something different to each other girl. I was the person who always um, just. I loved people coming up to me because it was distracting mm -hmm. for me, but I kind of just needed them to say like, "Go have fun, you got it," kind of thing. But yeah. that's it. No, yeah. like, can you remember what you didn't practice? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. It just did not help me at all. Oh, see, so yeah, that those kind of affirmations help me out. Granted, mm -hmm. we're very different when it comes to training in the gym. Um, I don't even know where your six is on the, the scale, but it, I don't. I doubt it. We're gonna high. talk about the enneagram, and that's a personality <gasps> test. We should write that down. I don't think we have that. Like, we on. don't. We don't. No, I did write it down. You did? Mm -hmm. What? Well, it's in the brainstorming. Topics. Oh, that, that but we're going to talk about up. a personality test because Janae and I took person. You, everyone at UCLA has to take this personality test and on we UCLA learn, gymnastics. On UCLA gymnastics, and you learn so much about yourself. You learn about how you deal with stresses. How it is you, wildly accurate, mm -hmm. and it just it just helps you learn more about yourself and how to best approach your teammates too. You know what I mean? So it was really great. So we'll definitely talk about yeah, so that. So Janae and I are very wildly different. <laughs> yeah. So we're in sync, but we're different at the same time. So I liked those affirmations. And when I listened to that YouTube video, elite gymnastics, why do we fall? It was more on the bus ride when I was in college on mm. the bus ride to the, cause it was only, it's only like four minutes, you know what I mean? So it was on the bus ride to the arena and then I would start listening to music. So it was just kind of a, 
um, an audio that would get me into my zone. That's what I would use to get me into my zone. And then it's like, okay, I'm in my zone. Let's have fun. Let's listen to music, whatever. Um, and I, I would do the same thing in club too. Because granted, I mean, if we, I didn't have a bus to take when I was in, like, my parents were driving me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would kind of do the same thing. Just listen to the audio real quick, get myself in my zone. I got this. And then, okay, cool. Um, I know what I'm supposed to do. And let's just listen to music and, you know, have fun with it. But it was more relevant to me in college because it helped me mm. kind of remember that I need to trust my training and I have everything I need to do well. So just go out and do your thing rather than getting it. So it kind of had like the opposite. It has the opposite effect yeah. on me. So it said it would get you in your head. It would keep me out of my head because I would get those affirmations right. that I'm fine. Cause I, I need that security. That's the personality type <laughs> that I am. Mine's more be free, <laughs> be, be free, play to the crowd, get yeah. distracted. See, my, yeah, and that's I, um, I just want to take a step back from the um, going first in lineup and going last in lineup oh, because yeah. I was always last in lineup in college. I was always near the end of lineup. And you know, basically majority of the time the day before when you're in lineup because during the meet, they kind of keep it consistent where you are. So I was, I always knew I had time to um, go at the end, but in elite training, you kind of get picked whenever. So I do remember going first or second and I loved going first or second more because then I didn't have to think about watching other people. Mm. And it made me less nervous because I could just warm up. I was ready. I wasn't going to get cold and I knew I could do a good job. I think going second was actually my favorite because it was the first person went and then I could go. Yeah. And, and I barely had any downtime that I had to prepare for um, getting more nervous. Yeah. So I, I actually did find a difference between going first in lineup and last in lineup. Oh yeah. I think cause I never really, I mean, I can't really remember in club when I would ever go last. I probably did cause I was older and I was, the mm. higher level but I mean granted I really can't remember the format of JOs that well because I did college for the last four years but I was always I never was in Pang's position I was always in the first in, in the first three when it came to lineup but there are times when you're exhibitioning and exhibitions mm. go last so I did have moments where I did compete the very very last and I had to wait through all six girls and then I could go so it's just different because you have to make sure your body doesn't get cold you know what I mean because then you have about 15 minutes before you compete after warming up so that's why you have to go back on the floor jump around yeah. and maybe reinforce some round offs but um it, say, it is oh. different because like you're good um it is different because you don't get in your head when you are first because you're like, okay, go, you just warmed up and now you're good rather than, oh, I have seven more people and then yeah. it's my turn. Why is it that when you compete in a gymnastics arena, it's always freezing cold? Oh, it's goodness. always cold. We uh, or I always, I mean, me and Pang, we both always wore leg warmers and I think we wore leg warmers the most out of anybody on the team. Um, and we had our own special ones because she bought <laughs> she brought me some from Canada and I was really from Canada <laughs> and I just felt really special. But I mean, we always got some for the team. But sh I mean, they I weren't think as warm. They weren't as warm, and we literally we had would, our own. We would special wear ones. it during warm up. Yeah, and it would keep my ankles warm. And I loved yeah. swinging bars with them. It was just great, and I just <laughs> felt so cool because I had leg warmers on on bars. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Jay, the biggest question of, I think, this podcast that I'm going to ask you. How do you deal with nerves in morning competitions and in evening competitions? Because I'll tell you a story. <laughs> when I was competing um, for the year of the Olympics, Team Canada didn't qualify a team. So we went to this thing called the London Testament. And that was basically for all uh, top teams from 8 to 16 in the world mm -hmm. to fight for the next four spots gotcha. in the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And so... We were in the first session. Mind you, I think the competition started at 7.30 or 8 o'clock. So we had to get up at 5, yeah. be at the arena at 5.30, start warming <laughs> up at 7 or no, 6. or so. It was, yeah, no. It was nuts because after the competition was done, it was like 9 o'clock or 10. Yeah. And I was thinking, so should we go for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> again? <Yeah. laughs> again? But the morning competitions, I get way less nervous because I think I'm still waking up, Oh yeah, <laughs> to be no. honest. Opposite for me. But um, in the <laughs> evening, I have all day to kind of just wallow in my room and just 
just think about life and stare at the ceiling because I have nothing to do. Oh, so I... <laughs> evening competitions always stress me out because I would I would always say, okay, I can't eat too much because if I eat too much, then I'm going to feel heavier on bars. Oh, if I do this, what? it's going to affect me in the evening. Yeah. Oh, I don't think about none of that. Really? I love competing at night. Girl, I well, granted, I am not a morning person. So I'm I not loved, either. I loved competing at night. So uh, my story is a little less... I mean, it's similar to yours, but I mean, I didn't travel, you know, internationally. But from California to Florida time, I had a meet in Florida. I was in the morning session in Florida, and Florida is already three hours ahead. So if I'm at 8 a.m., that's really me competing, like, at 5 or starting warm-up at 5. <laughs> um, so you can imagine my stress and just I'm tired, I'm cold, and when – those are a combination. I just, but then again, I was in club, so I was just kind of like, I'm tired. I want to go to bed rather than, it wasn't like I was stressed. It's like I didn't want to do gymnastics at that time <laughs> in the morning. So I was more just irritated than anything. I wasn't really stressed. <laughs> do you ever have sometimes when you're on the event just right before you're about to go and you're like, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> that was why, me. Why did I pick this sport? I'm so stressed out. Yeah, that was me. But I had more, that. I was tired and it was just so early in the morning. Like, <laughs> barely the crack of dawn and I'm just, oh, just let's have a little muffin and some eggs. And it's just, I want a big breakfast. I love competing at night because then I could have a nap in the day. <laughs> and oh, See, that that's where we're different because I never napped until junior year of college. Oh, I love napping. I was so hyper. <laughs> I think that's, honestly, I think that's why I got really nervous in the evening because since I was so hyper, I didn't know what to do with my energy. Yeah. And all the coaches are telling me, rest your legs, chill out, don't do anything. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Tasmanian devil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we would compete. We went to um, Hawaii. I mean, I wish we went to Hawaii in college, oh, but I went to Hawaii so nice. twice in club. And so they would tell us, you know, okay, don't, hey, don't spend all day in the sun because you have a meet tomorrow. So um, that makes sense as to why they tell you that. But I mean, yeah, if I compete at night, oh, you mean I, I can have breakfast. I got a nice lunch. I could take a nap and then I can get ready to, I would take that deal over any day than waking <laughs> up at 5 30 6 a.m to get ready for a meet and I'm like mom do my hair because I'm sleepy um so yeah. yeah but I mean as far as nerves I think when you do compete in the morning you're done by nine so then you have the full day so I do understand and I would sometimes prefer that but I'm just not a morning person so um I'm I not think either though it just <laughs> it, it forced me to stay calm because I was so sleepy <laughs> really, I had no choice but to yeah be calm because I was just so we tired didn't, we didn't really have morning we ish. never had it we in never college yeah. so I mean I guess I didn't really experience that I only experienced that in club but oh, I mean right. in in college I would like competing earlier on the afternoon side because then I would have more time after rather than, okay, it's time for bed. Um, but, yeah, I think for nerves between morning and night, I wouldn't be – I think, like I said, I didn't really get into my head, but I do think if you compete in the morning, then – you really don't you it's kind of like going first in lineup you don't have really time to get right. in your head so kind of just relate it to that um but like I said in club I was like I want to go back to bed like yeah. you, you're telling me I have to do a full floor routine at 7 30. What Great. actually helped me because maybe because I'm an extrovert I actually even if I was calm or just laying there I just like being around people so even Same. when we, so even when we were competing in the evening I would just go to someone's room and we would just lay on the bed or just something. I just had to be around somebody oh, because yeah. if I was by myself, then I think I would start getting in my head and start getting really nervous. Yeah. And that's when I was, I would always think, okay, should I eat this? Should I eat a snack? Should I have dinner at this time? But I think planning, planning my day also helped me. And I learned this in college. <laughs> planning yeah. my day helped me calm down my nerves. Cause in elite you're on a schedule. So you didn't have to plan anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, in college, too, you're on a schedule as well, but you're more on your own in college. In an elite, you're bound to a schedule, and they'll kind of say, okay, team walk at this time, um, team this at this time, and you're eating only a – I don't know. It, it's it's just a little different because in college they give you more freedom. Yeah. 
Um, but in elite, it's more strict, and you kind of have to stay in your room. Right. Because you're also younger, too, that they don't want you walking around. <laughs> Just wandering. <laughs> as well. <laughs> so um, I think that's also probably why I got more nervous in elite, because it was more restrictive. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think, um, what was I going to say? Oh, she mentioned planning your day, and that's only going to be more relevant as you get older. So the earliest you can start and get it down packed as far as what works for you, the better it's going to be. Because, man, when you plan your day and you know exactly what you want to do <laughs> and what time you want to do it, it's just going, that's just, you're going to be more productive and it's not going to stress you out because you know you have a plan, you know what I mean? So I didn't start planning my day till I got to college, though. Like, I, I didn't have I didn't a planner either. until then. I mean, I you know, they give you planners in school, but that was really just to write down my homework. It wasn't to, like, what time was I going to do this? I liked the buddy system. <laughs> so I would always text someone who's similar to me and say, hey, do you want to get breakfast at this time? Okay, we'll get breakfast at this time, and then we'll study for a little bit, and then we'll do this. And so yeah. it was always I had someone with me. Yeah. But I guess I guess that in elite, it's different because you are more individualized. Coaches kind of take over your schedule more. Right. So I, have, I knew some girls who didn't even leave their room for team dinner because they weren't allowed out of the room when wow. I was at World Championships. They, they had to stay in their room, what? sadly. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So That would make me so sad. Oh, my God, I would cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. It's like a bird trying to get out of a cage. Melissa, you want to go on a walk? Yeah, no. Mel- Melissa's funny. <laughs> 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 Melissa is Janae's roommate, and I one time I roomed with Melissa, completely She's opposite of me. a very, very homebody, Intro- would stay in bed. Introvert, right? Introvert. She'll talk when she wants to, but she's very just... um. She, like, Pang's not a napper. Melissa's a napper. You know what I mean? Like, she'll wake up for breakfast and then take a nap after breakfast. Like, that is her. I would never understand that. But <laughs> You would always catch me in the lobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it was funny. I don't know where we were, but we, uh, Pang and Melissa were rooming together. And Pang was like, oh, hey, Melissa, you want to go for a walk? It, was pro- it wasn't that early. It was probably, what, 10? It was 10, 11 30, o'clock. 11 o'clock. Like, and a, but- a little walk before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's like... No, I'm going to take a nap <laughs> like, right she, b- before she, lunch. Yeah, She knew what she needed. She goes, no, <laughs> no, I need a nap. <laughs> okay. So it's it's important to know what you individually need, and Pang and Melissa are just completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think uh, you'll start to learn that once you – I guess it's easier in college to learn what you need because you compete a lot more. Yeah. Um, honestly, even if you have an evening practice and if you have intra squads or mock meets in practice, treat those days like competition because it'll actually – help you to um, figure out what um, helps your nerves and that's the point of them too that's why they're mock meets you know what I mean they want to see what you would do in actual competition so yes even though they're the judges aren't really there they may be your coaches or I mean most I feel that a lot of coaches are already judges you know what I mean but oh the scores don't really count it's just to see where we're at but no they're really doing it so you can see how you would really do in competition. So treat it as such rather than, oh, you right. know, it's just we're not in long sleeve Leos. We're in our short sleeve and we're on our warm up Leos. So we just gonna have a fun day. Do have fun, but put yourself in that competition setting and not just because um, you're you're like just in your club gym yeah. and it feels like a practice. Well, if you want your meets to feel like a practice, then do so. But just put yourself in that meet setting. And if you want to feel like you're in practice, cool. If you want, if you need it to feel like a meet setting, do that. Do your hair. That's, that's kind of my, uh, com- that's how I feel like I'm in competition is oh, when same. I do my hair. If you re- compared to just you throwing it up in a bun and calling it a day actually. Yeah. You look good, you feel good. You look do good, good, feel good. Well, I think for, um, just to wrap things up a little bit, yeah. I, for, I, I don't know why I haven't mentioned this yet, but the way I figured out how to calm my nerves down over all those years <laughs> was actually smiling. And yeah. you, if you watch my um, 2018 uh, Super 6 NCAA National Championship routines, I smiled right before my bar routine and I smiled right before my beam routine, which I didn't smile before my bar routine the day before because I was so in my head. Because I, I wanted to do so well. You can well. really just tell. And I know that um, I'm just going to use her as an example because you could really tell. Uh, Michaela, it's all over my face. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela Skinner, in her beam routine, um, and she was last up and they didn't make it to Super 6. You could just tell she wasn't having fun. Right. You, she Because she's very animated when she competes, like very much so. So when you could just tell she was probably upset that they weren't going to Super 6. and You know what I mean? Like the season was over. But and you mm. can 
and she wobbled. Like you could just tell she was not enjoying herself like at all. Like the the demeanor in her face was completely different. So I know what you mean about smiling. Yeah. Before. And I think because floor was always my favorite and best event or one of my best events in club yeah an elite and i would always smile during floor but it's interesting because i was thinking why did i not smile in all the other events yet floor was always the one i was comfortable with i'd always hit yeah so that's when i started smiling on beam because it was my performance event gotcha. and bars i kind of learned to smile right before my bar routine i'd always take a deep breath to calm my nerves down and then smile right before i went on the event mm -hmm. so that was kind of like my regiment was calm my nerves down smile because then it's i've already slowed my heart rate down and then I, now now it's like game time but i yeah. didn't say let's go here we go you got it it was just ha huh, i can smile yeah feeling it's smile and enjoy it yeah like you said yours was a feeling i remember i said this in one of my posts um because what is nasty lucan's app grander grander okay so i did a video or deanna i should say did a video for grander and just kind of how you prepare right before you salute and i mentioned that i put my hand over my diaphragm take a deep breath and then i say faith and so that was just kind of like one word that i said to myself that i just want to have throughout the whole routine and that's what really got me to do my best routine and I think the deep breath was key for me. And um, I think simplicity too, like that one word. Simplicity, thing. yeah. To keep it simple. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did want to just make one more point before we um, end this. Uh, you mentioned that um, you feel that your nerves never really cease. Yeah. Um, to me, I feel I'm the most nervous right before I go. But once I start the routine, everything just kind of fades away. Um, and. I that's get true. in the rhythm of things. So that's, I feel that um, it's most important what, that I do what I do before or right before I salute because that's when I'm the most nervous because you're like, I'm about to go and oh my goodness and uh, like, <laughs> like bars is almost done. Well, I mean, I don't do beam. Okay, so bars, vault. Yeah, so, <laughs> so like whoever's right before you're like, okay, they're almost done and that means I'm next. So that's, it's important to what I do in that moment because when I do the routine and I finally, um, mount the event everything is just kind of like okay you're good now you're performing so that's me okay well Janae I really feel like we could have talked about this for another hour we didn't even do the like honestly segment we wanted to I do. know we had okay so we asked you guys questions and we loved all your questions and we want to add in this honestly segment because Janae's last name is honest my last name is Lee honestly envision it but <laughs> t-shirts <laughs> coming soon merch <laughs> because basically we honestly want to hear your opinions we want to hear your questions and we want to honestly answer them so that's where that segment's going to come in next time but we do want to expand on nerves because we really think it's such an important topic to discuss and there were so many good questions that we didn't even get to this time went by so fast yeah, I really did. Yeah, one of the really good questions, shout out to you guys also for following me and for answering to my question because I love hearing from you guys. You you all are very important to us. But one of the questions was, let me find it. Oh, from Riri underscore Letatem. Does the size of different arenas you compete in bring in different nerves? That's a really good one. Yeah. So we're going to answer... Some of these questions, or we're going to answer these questions next time, but these are just teaser questions, so you know what we're going to answer and talk about. And also, if you have any further questions, make sure to tweet at us at Peng Peng Lee and at Janae Honest. Using hashtag ambition on fleek. Yes. Um, oh, okay. Another one that I really liked, um, this is from Size for Impact. One, how to refocus after a bad routine. So kind mm -hmm. of dealing with those nerves. Yeah. And then two, how to compete without being scared of re-injury. So that's that's a different type of nervousness. Yes, yes. So we're going to dive deeper. We're going to dive that. real deep. <laughs> I don't know why I just got real Texas there. <laughs> do I sound Texas? Yeah, you do. I'm yeah. not even going to try an accent because I'm horrible at them. Small town girl from Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done.